Sergey Erofiev from Rutgers University. A pleasure to have you on the show again. Good to have you. Thank you, sir, for, for being with us. Now, so in February 2024, 13th package. Now we're talking about 14th package. Um, what are these sanctions doing? Why do we need so many of them? Are they not working, the 10th, 11th, or are they all hitting different um, category? Anya, uh, we couldn't even expect that amount of sanctions before the war broke out. So there's a definite progress in solidarity of those who back uh, the Ukrainian anti-Putin effort. Uh, let's talk in terms of whether it would have been better if there were no sanctions. And the answer is very clear. It would have been much worse with no sanctions, regardless of whatever we say now, how efficient these sanctions are. Uh, just uh, a minute ago, uh, your colleague mentioned uh, that uh, some 2,000 individuals from Russia have been sanctioned by the US, EU, G7. But uh, from the very beginning, the Russian position suggested that we should go for at least 6,000. Now we are quite certain that for these individual sanctions to be efficient, even that is not enough. It should be over 10,000, because these people are really criminals. Uh, but on the other hand, one can say that uh, it doesn't work immediately, but there is no silver bullet. Let's just remember that. It's a very meticulous and long-running work uh, with these sanctions. And I'm afraid that psychologically, and psychologically speaking, the Western public has to adjust to that and learn how to live with sanctions and persevere. But there are many other things which should be done. And just today, uh, sorry, it was yesterday, a very important appeal came from world leading scholars, including 41 Nobel uh, laureates, uh, suggesting the main sanction against Mr. Putin, and that's delegitimizing him in the aftermath of killing Alexei Navalny and uh, organizing sham elections. So delegitimize means a lot more probably than a certain combination of uh, half-measured sanctions. Mm. Well, I mean, these these are obviously very important uh, points you raise, Sergei, but I have to say that, you know, following these packages, I have to agree with Anya, we've always seen them incrementally change. We've had another handful of individuals, another 20, another 15. Uh, I mean, certainly some of these individuals and certain types of industries have already been known to contribute to the war effort. And at the same time, we're dealing with a very porous world economy. We know very well and full well about the shadow fleet, for instance, looking at oil and gas, trying to circumvent sanctions there. I mean, just this l last case that Anya mentioned as well, uh, in terms of the, um, the actual timber uh, imports from Kazakhstan and, you know, trying to go through in a third country. I mean, this is clear as day that, you know, there, there are certain signs that enforcement now is it's no longer having more of a sanctions package, but it's actually now more about enforcement. So where is that enforcement? Is that the next challenge and how do we get there that it's actually effective from all these packages that we already have? Uh, Sasha, we do not have a universal uh, global government which could impose everything on everyone. We live in a democratic post-industrial society where things have to be decided through consensus procedures. Look just at the European Union with so many, 27 countries. How do they make decisions? It can take months and years. So this is just a part of our life. That's the recommendation coming from social sciences. You have to learn how to live with that and persevere. Continue pursuing your goals and follow your moral principles. Of course, there will be more and more uh, interesting findings how to fight um, various actors circumventing these sanctions. And there has been some progress, like, for example, after certain pressure uh, from the democratic world, India started to be more cautious about buying Russian uh, carbohydrates. So uh, some process is going on. And uh, if there will be further intensification of uh, mm, this tragedy in Ukraine, uh, maybe there will be more pressure on China, for example, because China is in a very kind of ambiguous situation. On the one hand, they want to comply with the world uh, rules and order and just benefit from international trade. On the other hand, for China, Russia, and particularly Mr. Putin, 
is just a hooligan to be used against the opponents. So they're very subservient in that role. But, but it's also, you know, when, when we look at this and uh, looking at the recent thing that's come out of uh, the European Union, next thing, Brussels, uh, we're not even talking about sanctions anymore. I'm talking about the grain block, or rather the increased amount of slapping the 50% tariff on that Russian Belarusian grain, and that's that's not even a sanction. That's something that is just simply, let's say, a burden now for a Russian. So they can still transport through the European Union to a third country that Europeans still technically can buy. I mean, that's such a simple thing, uh, but it seems to be uh, almost impossible even on on that front uh, to to enforce and to get unity. I get what you're saying, but at the same time, if, if it's a matter of mindset, right, that we need to have more people on the ground convincing people in Europe that we need this enforcement. Well, what it, I just want to mention this, because when it comes to the um, timber that is coming from Belarus, um, the Poland's customs service admitted that they, they don't have the capacity to look into all customs declarations and invoices. Now, it looks like this can be um, fix right? th mm -hmm. this issue, right? This is not a big deal to just maybe hire more people, have more just, um, you know, custom service um, around. I mean, this is not about politics, I don't think. Resources, yeah. Uh, you know, guys, uh, I think we should remember that there is a triangle uh, here. One thing is the technicality and instrumentality. How can we achieve certain goals through certain actions? That's one thing. The other thing is uh, the moral uh, imperative of the free world. They simply couldn't but respond uh, to the uh, disaster in Ukraine with sanctions. And uh, number three is the political thing, the political will. So we mm, should not really confuse these things. Every segment of Western society would be hugely concerned with a moral response to Putin's aggression. Not every political actor uh, would be really politically uh, so brave and display so much goodwill uh, as mm, just the leaders first. And, uh, of course, the new ways of finding some instrumental solutions. We live, after all, in a fast-developing technological world. There must be ways to uh, technically and instrumentally help the political will and the moral obligation.